Were you or someone you know bored to tears at last night's football game? If you know me, then that's true. Listen to today's episode where we talk about all the studs, all the stinkers, and get you caught up with Week 11 action. This is Hall of Fame of Marshall Falk, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Happy to be here. As is Jay Grizz. Welcome into the show. Jason Moore is present. And accounted for. My, be- my best friend. My oh, best, best I'm friend. I'm your best fantasy friend. Yes. Best buddy. Uh, Mike is he's finally he's finally gone down. Jay Grizz is here in his stead. I was with Mike yesterday. We were watching all of these fine and not so fine games. And he was slowly melting into the couch. With the with the sickness, just with some sort of illness, he's not a he's a man of very few words when it comes to like the Sunday event. Like you're right. you're you're normally tilting. You talk a lot. Like I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose. Correct. That's pretty much. It doesn't matter what's happening. I'm right. tilting at all times watching football. Up thirty, down thirty. Up fifty, down fifty. I you're gonna lose. Know the truth that I'm going to lose. And I'm normally talking a lot. Oh, look at this! Look at that! And Mike just kind of sits. But eventually, I look over, and, and uh, he had expired, and we we got him out of there. And sweet. So now we got Jay Grizz. Yeah. Follow him on Twitter at Jay Grizz FFL <laughs> with one Z. We have the weekly rewind today. Some injury news. We've got the studs, the stinkers on the show today. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. And the website's thefantasyfootballers.com. It's Monday. We put the call out to the mm-hmm. Foot Clan. We've got some very sophisticated Monday Pundays, Jason. Would you like to share these with me? Yes, I would. <laughs> How about Muhammad Snooze? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, a couple for DJ here. We've got DJ Exclamation Chark. That's, that's innovative. Or... Tis the season. Oh. Chark the Herald Angels sing. Yes, and of course that is DJ Chark. We don't talk about the other DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Spectacular. <laughs> Break me off a piece of that big deck bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, Gerald Neverett. Dud Sean Watson. Oh, Robert we didn't play. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. That sucked. Peanut butter dwelly time. That's my favorite. Yes, that one's great. Peanut butter dwelly time? Yes. Oh, be a thing. Do and they then, get to play the Cardinals every week? <laughs> uh, he wishes. Poop in my big boyd pants to mm. end it on a very sophisticated note. <laughs> yeah. I think we've unfortunately had to say that one before. Yeah, I mean, look, if there is a Monday Punday that can incorporate caca, <laughs> then we will get the job done here at the Fantasy Footballers We podcast. are willing to sift through 600 to 800 puns. Yeah, just to, to find, find the poopy ones. All right, let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. Maybe this weekly rewind can begin with your take of the Sunday night football experience. Oh, night. okay. All right. Um, my take was I wasted <laughs> a night. It <laughs> was terrible. <gasps> yeah, no, I feel for you, Jay. Um, <laughs> the Rams couldn't do anything and they dominated the game. <laughs> so, I mean, that, I mean, that's what it came down to. Um, you, they, they were able to fix. They being the Rams, able to fix some of the run, uh, you know, running capabilities. Their offensive line, actually, I think they might have addition by subtraction here. You know, we were worried they lost two starters, but their line was already trash. Well, it looks like the rookies that came in in replacement, they might be more capable than the starters. Uh, there was better protection for Goff, better running lanes 
for Gurley, but overall it was just it was just incredibly boring. I mean, I was bo- I was bleeding from my eyes. Yeah, I w- and then what about that hip? Maybe that hip's been holding oh, Trubisky yeah. back. No, I you know I've been saying it for a long time. His hip is uh, an issue, and so he's going to need to take the end of the game uh, <laughs> on the sideline. Yeah, I mean, so Mitchell Trubisky got benched as he should have. But they're saying it was a hip issue, and I went back and I watched a couple plays where he could have, he could have hurt his hip, and there were some kind of different stories of it happened in in the second half, and yet he got it checked out in the locker room at halftime. So I was like, how did that happen? Is the hip located close to the ego? The hip is uh, about three feet below. <laughs> three feet. I almost went three yards. Three yards below. below the got ego. it. Yeah. Uh, Part of the running game situation in Los Angeles simply has to do with committing to it. You know, it's a law of averages to a degree. When you commit to the run with Todd Gurley, he's going to break off a few plays. You give him 10 chances a game, you got lower odds. They obviously, the Robert Woods news was shocking to everybody. Yeah, that was mind blowing. Um, obviously, you still have replacements. A lot of people threw in um, Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds, who. Looked like he was going to have a great game when he broke a long touchdown play, but then that got called back. Um, and then you, thankfully, this is a good Monday night football game. Obviously, uh, having having uh, Woods not play this late into the week on Sunday night football stinks, but at least the Monday night football game has options. You've got can I mean, you can pick up McCall Hardman. We talk about it all the time, and he maybe he gets one snap, and maybe you're fine with that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It, and then some pivots were last night, either to Josh Reynolds or to Anthony Miller or... Some people pivoted to Everett, who in his own right was very disappointing. You could tell this was not the expectation. He played, I believe, only 14 snaps. So there was something going on health-wise. Just the, one catch. At the end of the game, when they needed a big play, they did bring him in. He got a, a very nice catch, but this was not a he stunk situation this was a he was clearly injured and barely used situation so going forward monitor the the practice reports if he's healthy I, I still think he's a good play Robert Woods inactive last night for a personal issue came out of nowhere practiced in full all week nobody saw it coming and we'll have updates when we find out whether this will affect more than his activity in last night's game Marlon Mack is the big injury news he fractured mm. his hand in Sunday's win he was playing extremely well. He did put up a nice fantasy day before departing. Unlikely to play. Yeah, they, they've got the short week. They're playing on Thursday, so he's no chance at that. I mean, he could miss a significant chunk of games to the tune of, you know, into the fantasy playoffs and become irrelevant. But hopefully we get good news early on, and they say he can miss a week and come back. It is what his- if he gets a club hand? Oh, that's hard to hold a football oh, with dang. a club hand, and that's it is true. his right hand, which is his dominant carry hand. So it it really, really stinks, m- mostly for me, because in <laughs> League of Record, I have Marlon Mack. I traded for him, and now... You're not comforted by Royce Freeman finding his way into your starting lineup? Get, <laughs> no. Um, and then I get to play the guy this coming week who I traded Marlon Leonard. Mack from. Yeah. So he, he would have been his problem against me. Now he's my problem against him. Yeah, that'll affect some fantasy teams for sure. It was interesting. Uh, Naeem Hines, Jonathan Williams kind of took up the reins. Jonathan Williams was running very hard in this game. Hines got into the end zone. We'll see what happens. I mean, Both the, guys went over 100 rushing yards. They, they can rush the ball there. I mean, they're, they're a running team. So the Thursday matchup. They're gonna. These are gonna be waiver wire guys tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, their offensive line is so good that their offensive linemen are scoring touchdowns now. We also found out Matthew Stafford's back injury could end up sidelining him for up to six weeks. That's not great for that team. You did see Jeff Driscoll. Oh, put up a, Brooks. You played Jeff Driscoll in a league. Is oh that, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's an oh yeah. Well, now. yeah, it's well, an oh yeah. He was pretty. Last week it was like you're playing Jeff Driscoll and he goes, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And then started crying. It's a dynasty league and Russell Wilson on by, Stafford Hurt and wow. went to Driscoll. Well, you one big score. Brooks, all he said is he goes, I've got a play. That's right. It didn't involve Kenny Galladay though. I will well, a little prequel to the uh stinkers. 
part of the show. Weekly Rewind and News brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's go ahead and get right into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Oh, we said it was coming. Oh, uh, yeah. We knew we it was coming. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Josh Allen, the number one quarterback on the week. Mike's start of the week, 21 for 33, 256 and three. We Finally, the big game. The and big play to John Brown, too. You know, the you hadn't had that deep touchdown yet. Seven for fifty-six and one on the ground. It was just it was just a dominant performance. Buffalo, uh, you know, a lot of the writers there are talking about how they've been winning games, but they haven't had any statement games. And yeah, it's the Dolphins. But the Dolphins had been winning a few games, had looked better, and they absolutely smashed them. They got a little close at the end. Got a little bit closer. Yeah, it did. It okay. did. That's why part of that is why Josh Allen could have the day he had. Uh, first quarterback to throw for two fifty and three and rush for fifty and one since twenty fifteen. That's a very specific stat. Yeah, it is. Lamar Jackson. Speaking of crushed them, he's incredible. It, it, right now, he is last year's Pat Mahomes. He's the cheat code. Where and again, Lamar Jackson was not an early round quarterback. Right, you you think, oh, if you want this year's Pat Mahomes, you're gonna have to pay up in that first, second, third round, depending on your league type, and get Pat Mahomes. No, another late round quarterback who is the runaway fantasy MVP so far this year. It's just unbelievable. To compare him to Mahomes last year, Mahomes had five finishes inside the top three last year. Lamar Jackson already has seven. Wow. I mean, he, he he's he, also just broke the record formerly held by Michael Vick, of consecutive games with 60 rushing yards at the quarterback position. He's just unbelievable. His baseline is so extremely high, and his ceiling is We might higher. not know it yet. We might not know it yet. Lamar Jack, they are, they are turning themselves with the way the defense is playing, which, by the way, if you played Baltimore, you had the guts to do it against Deshaun Watson, and it would have paid off in spades. Now, this will be but, an, in an interesting stretch him going forward he's got three tough matchups the Los Angeles Rams with Jalen Ramsey who have looked great since that trade the San Francisco 49ers who've been great against quarterbacks against wide receivers and then Buffalo so those three games are really going to be the test here for Lamar Jackson and now I'm going to go ahead and say he's studied he <laughs> and he's going to pass the test all right uh Jimmy Garoppolo got to play the Cardinals again which means of course he got to play the Cardinals again. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things you want to look for on your schedule and highlight and circle whenever your players get to play against the Cardinals. Um, I believe eight of his 18 touchdowns on the season are against the Cardinals. Yeah, he had four more in this one. They don't get to play the Cardinals anymore. I'm no, sorry. No, twice a year. Uh, Dak Prescott. Big game. 444-3. and three. He's been absolutely awesome. Again, you've got another one where you go, okay, now the schedule coming up. You've got New England, Buffalo, and Chicago. That is two-thirds on the road. That is, if it's possible to be worse than Lamar Jackson's schedule, Dak has found a way to do it. Yeah, I, that's that makes him a very questionable start. I mean, in New England and in Chicago, I'm not you know, going Buffalo to start, at home maybe? I'm, I'm not... I'm probably not going to start. I mean, he, he'll be on that cusp where he might have to, but if I can... Bench Dak, even though he's been on fire against New England, in New England, I will. That doesn't feel like a very nice reward for this game. It's not. It's it's not a reward. But <laughs> I would reward – if Lamar Jackson was playing in New England next week, I would play him because the rushing capability changes the equation. Dak is a good mobile quarterback, but he's not a, yeah, he's not a break the NFL rushing record type of weapon. Pivoting off of Kyler Murray would have been a mistake if you did it. I did it in the listener league for... How'd that work out? Uh, poorly. Who'd poorly. You, who'd you play against? Uh, you. Yeah. Yeah, I played... Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I played Kyle Allen, Jason. Thank you. You know, I almost played Kyle Allen against you in our league of record. We're going head-to-head -head in two different leagues, and I chose to not do that because he is Kyle Allen. Don't hold your... Hey, Philip Rivers hasn't played, <laughs> <laughs> no, hasn't played I yet. So. I, I think I've made the right move. I think my odds are heavily in that favor, but Philip Rivers could easily say, hold my beer. I guess since it's just us here to, today, in the Listener League, we're tied. Yes. And you have Austin Eckler, I have Keenan Allen. 
So whoever wins that head to head is going to win the match. Yeah, the match. <laughs> uh, and then in the league of record, <sighs> we are just about tied. I'm up a few points, and uh, you you have Pat Mahomes. Ever heard of him? I have Philip Rivers and Tyree Kill. Now you were supposed to have uh, Pat Mahomes and Robert Woods. That's true, Jason. That's true. And That's true. you, being a wise fantasy analyst. Saw Robert Woods and thought, I need to put him in my flex. He's a late Sunday night game so that you could pivot. Right? No, Jason. Oh, no, no, yes. no, 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 no. I no, drink Jason. your tears. You do. Uh, we'll see if you can find some yourself tonight. Patrick Mahomes can avoid Tyreek but score 40, and then I've got a shot. All right. Uh, Driscoll had a big game. Kirk Cousins, what a comeback performance. Some big-time throws. Really impressive. This week was bizarre. Every game that was like supposed to be a clear blowout started with the team being dead. Like the 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 Lions were way big up on the Cowboys right off the bat in that game without Matthew Stafford. The Cardinals were up sixteen to nothing on the 49ers. The Vikings were getting smashed, smashed at home, and all three of these teams came back and 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 won. And Kirk Cousins' complete second half story twenty nine for thirty five. He was great. I mean, he did basically everything he could do to get them back into it, and it was just enough. I mean, over the listen to this. Over the last five years, when you're trailing by 20 points by the half, you're 0-99. Not anymore. So now they're 1-99. 1%. Easy math. Thank you. Yeah, math. you did it. You did it. All right. Uh, we'll, give, uh, we'll move on to the running backs. It was a weird week. If you want to know how good Christian McCaffrey is, <laughs> they got – their keisters handed to them they in this was, game. They scored three points. Yes, and he was the number one fantasy running back on the week. That's impossible. Not for Christian. I mean, he is... Brooks, do you remember that time we traded for Christian McCaffrey in the League of Record? Yes, I do. Oh, that was great. Mark Ingram was number two on the week. He had a couple of touchdowns in the passing game. Gus Edwards even broke a long run in that one. Eight for one, 12 and one. He's just in the handcuff oh, he category. Because if a, Ingram went down, oh my goodness, he is a major handcuff. I, I, you know, we don't bring him his name up as often as Alexander Madison, but he is every bit in that same conversation. Gurley, twenty-five carries, ninety-seven yards, one touchdown. Will it continue against Baltimore, Arizona, Seattle? Will you see this kind of volume from Todd Gurley? I think you are going to see a heavy workload from him. And and, and about this, I mean, this isn't a game where you were getting old Todd Gurley 30 points. I mean, Malcolm uh, Brown got one of the touchdowns, and they really were able to bottle. In fact, the first quarter for Todd Gurley, he he had his most rushing yards in the first quarter of his career, and he's had monster games. So they got off to a strong start, but then they were pretty much able to bottle him up and didn't do much as the game went forward. Uh, Zeke had a nice game. Joe Mixon, your start of the week, ended up with another good performance. This is uh, He's running them together. Yeah. Joe Mixon's looking looking great. Joe Mixon's a guy you could play, obviously, bad matchup coming up against Pittsburgh, but I think when you've got a guy who's just going to get the ball ad nauseum, you, you, stay, you stay in the flames and just change your expectations for what you're going to get. All right, before we touch on wide receiver studs, we want to thank Lightstream for sponsoring today's podcast. Look, Jason, we know this. The holidays are approaching. I've already decorated a little oh, bit. Oh, good man. And you may be thinking of how you're going to save some extra quiche. Well, you can consolidate. You can consolidate your high-interest credit card balances to a lower rate and save, and that's what Lightstream does. You can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with AutoPay. That's much lower than the kind of uh, national 20% range. Uh, they're fixed rates, so if you want to consolidate to a fixed rate, it's not going to budge. No fees. You can get your money as soon as the day you apply. It's just making it more affordable to consolidate, save some cash. And just for our listeners, you can apply now and get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com. Slash footballers for more info. And Foot Clan, let's talk about washing our butts. Huh? <laughs> let's do it. Because 
I am a huge fan of my Omigo. That is the luxury toilet bidet, as I refer to it. I love it so much. I don't know if you could. there could be a bigger fan on this I, earth. I you, love it so much that when I had it at home and I forced us to get one at the office, because look, sometimes I got to do it here too. You basically made me pay yes, to, to wash to your to butt. My, yeah. Think about what you're doing when you're taking toilet. If I took some Hershey syrup and I poured it on this table here, would you want me to just get a dry paper towel and give it a wipe? No, that'd be ridiculous. <laughs> That would be absolutely re- but that's what we're doing with higher stakes than Hershey syrup. Think about it. Look, the, the Omigo has everything. It washes you perfect every time. A warm seat, warm water, better hygiene, save money on all the toilet paper. There's no plumber needed when you're flushing wet wipes with chemicals. Look, for better health, better hygiene, stop wiping, start washing. Right now, get 10% off your order. Go to myomigo.com slash footballers. That's myomigo.com slash footballers get 10 percent off your toilet seat bidet impressive and impressive. i was able to install it uh, which is again very very impressive it just means it's easy yeah it does it yep. does mean that <laughs> yes. uh and we'll be talking about flushing away some performances here soon but let's go uh to the good john brown had a monster game nine for 137 and two 14 targets huge game do i do i get credit as my pivot start of the week even you, though my you start will of the week credit. was, yeah, because I, yeah. I had I had two starts. It was Brown and Brown. Why well, this is Marquise he, Hollywood Brown was my actual start of the week. Yeah, and then stunk. He stunk. Yeah, but John Brown was like your if you're not sure Marquise is healthy start of the right. week. Right. So I'm just gonna say I won. Uh, well, you're 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 <laughs> the listeners may not say that if yeah. they've started Hollywood, fifty plus receiving yards in every single game. That's John Brown. He is their number one receiver. When they throw the ball, that's where they go. Only Michael Thomas can match that number this year. Denver, Dallas on the schedule. He's Baltimore, the, Pittsburgh, New England. I mean, he's the wide receiver 14 on the season. Been unbelievably consistent. And now you get to see the talent, the big blow-up potential, which he clearly has with his his lightning speed. All right, let's talk about Sharknado. Mm. DJ, Chark, 8 for 104 and 2. The, here's the more impressive number. 15 targets. I know you asked me last week, am I worried? about DJ Chark with Nick Foles? The answer was no, because of the talent. And that talent demanded 15 targets in this game. He's the wide receiver, five on the year. And he's got much better matchups than some of these other top-end wideouts to finish the season. I went back and forth on my rankings, kept thinking, okay, we haven't seen him with Foles. They don't have the rapport. I've got to move him down. And then I went, well, no, he's too talented. I'm going to move him up. I went back and forth all the way up until Sunday game time, and it's so nice to have a definitive answer. He is the number one for that team. It is not Mike's sweetie Deedy. And because of his talent, I mean, one of those catches for a touchdown, it wasn't some great, incredible pass that, you know, it was just he caught the ball in the middle of the field, then he turned on the Jets and said, I'm faster than you. Yeah, second catch was incredible too. So, I mean, DJ Chark – He's he's a league winner this year. He's one of the few guys, I think, that should be in the conversation along with Lamar Jackson's. You got him so late in best ball leagues where you're going 18 rounds. He was more often than not not drafted. I was gonna say he was he was a free agent pickup. So I mean he's he's been and now you've got a wide receiver one locked in rest of the year. He gets to play Tampa at home. He gets to play Oakland. He gets to play Atlanta. Although Atlanta may be the best defense in football now. <laughs> the last two. All right. I'm going to name some guys that had big weeks but aren't in the, you know, haven't been in the upper echelon category. You tell me who you have the most confidence in moving forward, okay? okay? Calvin Ridley finally did it. He had a big game, 8 for 143 and 1. Randall Cobb had another big game, 4 for 115 and 1. Michael Gallup, 9 for 148. Debo Samuel, a reprise, 8 for 134 on 10 targets. Yeah, there's a, a lot of great options here. If I have to say who I've got the most confidence in, I don't know if it'll surprise you or not. I mean, I've I've spoke confidently of this player coming up rest of season, and it's started to come to fruition, but it's Calvin Ridley. Um, even though Michael Gallup just looked amazing, when it comes to Gallup and Cobb, we just spoke about Dak's schedule, and I checked, and it's the same schedule that his wide receivers have. So they, they're going to be on the same team for the next few weeks, and that that's just a schedule where are you really going to start Michael Gallup in New England? Randall Cobb in New England? But give me Calvin Ridley against Tampa Bay 
all day. Uh, the Saints, the Panthers. Uh, you know, I I think Calvin Ridley has shown. Look, he's a first round NFL player. He he was drafted to be a star wide receiver. He's shown plenty of flashes, and now the opportunity with no Muhammad Sanu, no Austin Hooper, it's his for the taking. Yeah, I agree with that. It's kind of incredible. Amari Cooper, all of his monster performances are at home this year. I don't know if you know that. I did not know that. At Washington, he was the 30th. At New Orleans, 37th. At New York Jets, 94th. And then this game was in Detroit when he stunk it up. And, the, you know, Randall Cobb and Gallup took advantage of very little production from Amari Cooper. Or so, Amari Cooper had very little production because Michael Gallup and Randall Cobb yeah. just went to work and were open ad nauseum. Yep. So you like Ridley the most of that group. I, I do. get it. And the it, upside potential. Debo is interesting as well. He's demanding targets, and uh, there aren't a lot of options there. That'll depend a little bit on Kittle's health, though. So Ridley has the clearest path to production season long. I agree with that. Yeah, I, 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 I like Samuel as well. I think that even when the health comes around for the for Kittle and for Emmanuel Sanders, I don't think Debo Samuel is just going to be relegated to irrelevance. What I like about Debo is games with, you know, you say, okay, he's in Baltimore. Maybe that's not a great matchup. That's true. But they play New Orleans. They play the Rams. They play the Packers. These are games that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have to do some work in the passing game. They can't just go defense, running game. So hopefully Debo stays involved. It was a nice performance. Uh, Marvin Jones. Yeah. Scored a couple times. Yeah, I mean, people are upset because no, you didn't play Marvin Jones, right? The process with Jeff Driscoll against the good Dallas Cowboys defense. I, I would say majority of leagues out there where you have Marvin Jones, who's on your bench, and you feel stupid and you feel dumb. He only had five targets, only four receptions. It, just two of them were touchdowns. Oh, he's leading the league in touchdowns now. He's tied with eight. Yeah. DJ Chark, Kenny Galladay. We'll talk about him later. Also, it, we had the apology show last week remember we said <laughs> remember we said we were sorry uh-huh i think you think i'm heading somewhere else i was just gonna say i feel like michael thomas uh. deserves an actual apology from the fantasy community because no one was willing to put him in the very upper echelon and here he's faced multiple quarterbacks and he's by far the best wide receiver in fantasy he's never finished outside the top 22 so he's giving you all the consistency you could ever want like Devonte adams did last year He's got the most – I think he's the, like the first player to get 90 receptions this many – you know, at this point in the season, like ever yeah, for the he, Saints. he has been so incredibly consistent. And you're right, while he was still a, a, an upper echelon wide receiver in the draft season, he wasn't in the same conversation with Hopkins and Julio for most people. He was, he was a tier below those guys, a tier below Devontae Adams, and he has clearly been the best wide receiver for fantasy this year. He's given you monster upside games, and he's never disappointed you. So he's, he's been great. I thought – Yeah, so, you were going to mention the fact that these players don't know how to handle an apology. Right. You apologize to James Conner. He's like, I didn't deserve that. And then Mike apologized to Amari Cooper. So, sometimes people don't know how to take a compliment. What does you know? that mean? What can DK Metcalf take one? Well, thankfully he was on by, so yeah, he's got but, time to work work through it. You you know who you also you owe an apology, uh -oh. and I think you did apologize to this player early on. I'm afraid, but Corlin Sutton, I mean, he is just great. He is a great wide receiver. You watch some of these catches going over the middle, bad throws. He grabs everything. He's a great wide receiver, and if his quarterback had he's a great thrown quarterback. Him a better Throwing him a better ball. Yeah, he, th he threw one, too. If he had a better ball over the middle of that game, he, he put a double move on that secondary and was wide open, would have gone in for a touchdown with a better pass. But it just really is one of those things where do you trust that he'll ever have a good quarterback? Because unless you think Drew Locke is that guy. The, oh, no, I don't. I don't. Yeah, Elway is not. He's just the one. Sutton's the one. When Sanders left, his volume got locked in stone, basically. But it's just a shame because it's like you're going to end up in purgatory for a while because Flacco's not the answer, Locke's not the answer. You're not going to have a top pick. So uh, I just like how people out there are saying, like, okay, we've got we've got our guy. There are contingents of Brandon Allen truthers now because he's moving around and had some good games. Trevor Simeon had good games yeah. for this team. Do you remember the Trevor Simeon hype? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brock Osweiler had some good games. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I, you know, and you look around the league, and, and that's um, no disrespect to Brandon Allen, but you got to do it for more than like two games. Yeah. Ask Kyle Allen. Yeah. He he had a monster game against Arizona to start his career. A couple of really good ones. How? Remind me how he did this week. Poorly. Poorly. Yeah, my listener league team agrees with me. All right, Ryan Griffin at the tight end position. Are, do we need to start playing him? Uh, well, now that Herndon is out, I think he can be in the mix of guys that you take the shot on, but more often than not. Great matchups. Oakland, Cincinnati, Miami the next three weeks. <laughs> five for 109-1 and one on five targets. He's the tight end 14 on the year. This is, this is a great stupid stat. He has more finishes as the tight end one on the week than Kelsey, Kittle, and Ertz combined. That's a terrible stat. I know. It's awful. But because impressive. he has finished twice as the tight end one on the week. It seems like Sam Darnold trusts him. The schedule for the Jets is great. Robbie Anderson gets one catch a week, and Griffin's scoring. I think he's a pickup. I really do. I, I think he's a, a player you can pivot to at the tight end position and, and always have a shot at – you know, he's probably going to catch four balls a week and no Herndon. Yeah. Uh, I I mean, you got to do what you got to do if you don't have a regular weekly tight end start. Kyle Rudolph. Hey, nice start of the week there. Five for 67 and a touchdown on five targets. He has five touchdowns on the year, all in the last five weeks. That's pretty impressive. And this one was very nice. A longer, uh, pretty wide open design touchdown play. Yeah, he had to run and everything. He couldn't just put one <laughs> hand up and catch it. Ross Dwelly. Oh, my goodness. Two touchdowns. He only had 14 yards, but he scored twice against an Arizona defense that gets – I think they get paid. They do. By That's in the contract. Giving up touchdowns if to the tight to end. If it's to a tight end, they get a bonus. Each player gets a $100,000 bonus <laughs> for a tight end touchdown grand. against them. That's right. Oh, I verified man. that with spot track. Oh, it's so painful to be a Cardinal fan right now because – they're always like two or three plays away from winning these games. Cardinals, uh, Mike Clay Moral tweeted victories, it. Andy. Mike Clay tweeted this, and this is worth noting for the offensive options. Like, their first handful of games, they're averaging like 1.2 touchdowns a game. They're up at like 2.7 touchdowns a game over the last handful. Their offense is playing much better. Yes, for but fantasy. But their defense is playing much same. Much same. Much uh, same. For fantasy, the Arizona Cardinals offense is fantastic. They have had a very – tough stretch of games now they go on bye week which is a very tough stretch yeah, for fantasy unlikely to put up big points but i mean you're talking about two of the last three weeks they've been against the 49ers throwing touchdowns and you yeah know, they've got their answer um isabella's on the field he's a big play guy christian kirk's playing well yeah he's, he's being targeted and they've finally got a running back that can produce yeah, and kyler ran in uh, a touchdown yesterday from uh 20 plus yards so jared cook scored really nice touchdown catch if, you, if your league gives bonuses for like flamboyance, for cool touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. This is this is my start of the week. I'm happy he worked out. Oh my gosh. Cameron Braid. Hey, so my start of the week last week, OJ Howard. Oh, we came how, in. How do you we, feel about this? I, I mean, feel so great. So man. lucky, right? So, no, no uh, not lucky. Unlucky. So skilly. Yes, because it was great to call that. And then when we came back the next week and say, okay, is this OJ Howard? Is he back? Can you, can you, and we said, absolutely not. Like, no, you do not want to keep Run playing. Run for the hills. Yes. And then he had a drop, he being O.J. Howard, um, early in the game, and then was benched. And then was like, okay, you're done. You're, you're, you're dead to me. Hey, it Cameron was Bray. such a gross drop because he kind of like juggled it and then rotated around like he looked like he was going behind the back, and then he threw it to the other team. And then Cameron Brake caught 10 passes, which was a record for the tight end position. <laughs> it was almost like it's, it was punitive. Yes, it's look here. what I can do. I think I think Bruce Arians talked to Jameis and was like, "You throw it to Cameron Bray every time, and after every throw, you stare at OJ Howard." I mean, so he this, is, this could have been you. Howard is clearly in the in the doghouse there, and whether he returns to this team next year is a question in my mind. Because it's not they extended Bray, they don't use the tight end position a lot. Howard trade rumors that were already abounding. If he doesn't factor into the Arians' offense and Arians is frustrated with him, I just wouldn't be surprised. It hurts his dynasty outlook not knowing what the future holds I, for OJ. I just want to read some numbers here, and I apologize for the length of these numbers. Two zero four four one four two three 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 four six four two three two four two two three three one four fourteen targets. 
That was Cameron Brate's game log of his target counts. <laughs> How far back were you going? I went back to last year. I could go further. That's three, also four, I mean, that's I the code just, to get into our studio as I'm, well. Yes, so that's you, right. Uh, I mean, that's um, 14 targets yeah. for Cameron Brate is not something that he can or should handle. <laughs> <laughs> it's not allowed. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Well, we had some stinkers this week. Some uh, some big boy pants got filled up, Jay. And, and some of them were mondo-sized pants, like Deshaun Watson, superstar. You wanted Watson and Lamar Jack Jackson Squatson. going head-to-head. -head. You wanted pieces in this matchup. This is what we were talking about. We wanted all the pieces we could handle in this game because so many points were going to be scored. And we were half right because the Ravens scored a lot of points. But yeah, the I, Texans was, did not. Generally, when – like Watson's had some inconsistency during the course of a game, and he normally is able to salvage that over the back half. But as this game progressed – Well, it's really funny. I mean, this is by far his worst performance of the year. He's had – so many good ones. So it's by far his worst performance of the year, but he is actually – this is now his fourth, and keep in mind, you know, this is, this is 10, 11 weeks in. This is his fourth game where at the quarterback position, he's a bust. Because if you're not in the top 15 in a 12-team league, that's, that's a bust week. He's been the quarterback 22, twice, 16, and now we don't know where he'll finish on this week, but it's not good. And so – it's very interesting for a guy who every other week has been a top 12 option or a top five option all but one of those weeks. And I, I would kind of, if I'm the Deshaun Watson owner, I just throw this game away. You throw it out of your mind. If there's one thing we know about Watson is he bounces back. He's a disciplined player. Those games you talked about, when he finished 22nd in Jacksonville, followed it up with the number five overall performance. 22 at Carolina, followed it up by the number one overall performance. 16th at Indy. Number two the next week. Next three games at home against Indianapolis, New England, and Denver. But you played Deshaun Watson. He's your quarterback. Yeah, I mean, he's he's too good. But he, he definitely let everyone down and stunk this week. Yeah, woof, Kyle Allen. Woof, 50 pass attempts. That should be good enough for uh, whoa, four, four interceptions. 50 pass attempts is something that you should never put in the hands of a quarterback like Kyle Allen. He likes to put the ball in the hands of the other team, and none of these were tipped passes that were like, "Oh no, that was he was you know bad route." These were just he's he played horrific football. Yeah, they got destroyed by Atlanta. That's Atlanta beating two good teams. It's Atlanta beating in a row. two good teams with defense. And was there a change from Dan Quinn calling the defensive plays? I think there might be. Did they change all their players? <laughs> yeah, something changed. Out of the bye, they came out, two great performances. Now Kyle Allen has to go to New Orleans. No, thank you. Brady. Oh, man. 26 for 47 for 216, no touchdowns. My uh, eight-year-old was playing in a in our uh, family league, and his opponent benched Lamar Jackson to play Tom Brady this week, and he was quite tickled <sighs> by that fact. Wow. <laughs> Worked out well in his favor, but this was a – what do you make of it? I mean, they won the game. Uh, but I mean, this was one of the worst performances Brady's had in a little while. I would. Uh, th this is not a good offensive team. the The New England Patriots are great defensively, but if you look at a lot of the metrics on how the the Patriots are are scoring, how they're moving the ball, the the yards per uh, drive, things like that, this is pretty much the worst Patriots team that we've seen now it's all masked in the NFL by their defense. That's great. But I mean, you look at the last five games and you have four passing touchdowns. Yeah. Brady has Brady. Brady hasn't been a top 12 quarterback over the last four games now. And he's only done it uh, four times out of uh, now 10 games. So not trustworthy at the position. He's on the fringe in terms of just how the season's gone. They don't seem to have a flow in the running game at all. Whether they hand it to Burkhead, White, or Michelle. And they're passing a lot. I mean, 47 attempts for Brady. Yeah. Still only 26. And this was against the Eagles. It's a very beatable secondary. So, yeah, extremely disappointing. Yeah, and we'll see what happens with the wide receiver position, too. I mean, Nikhil Harry got in towards the end of that game, three catches. They're trying to find something. Mohamed Sanu's mm -hmm. not bringing it 
home. Jared Goff, or as I call him, Mitch Trubisky with makeup. Um, Eleven start, for eighteen. I'm starting to see it. I mean, he's he is fine at a very specific thing, and if if that thing gets moved to the left or to the right, he's not good. Uh, if you can give him some good play action passes with protection. He will sling it downfield, and he'll put it where it needs to be. I he, I think he's got great deep ball accuracy when he's protected, better than a lot of other good quarterbacks. So he, he's, you know, maybe he's a one-trick pony, but it's a great trick. Hopefully this new offensive line can protect him. He only threw the ball 18 times. This, this game was – I am so watch. sorry to everybody who had to watch it. And you – what was funny is you said, why didn't they flex, some, flex something out earlier – and they're flexing next week's game. Yeah. But you knew right away what you were getting into. You want golf uh, against Baltimore next week, Jason? Um, at home against Baltimore, I think it is. It, he he can be a play. Yes. You your eyebrows go up like that's an. Insane I thought I was thing. putting the ball in the tee for you to, to just. Wind blew it over, buddy. It was that's very windy asinine. In here. Asinine. That's asinine to play him. So you th asinine means you don't think he's going to be a top fifteen quarterback. I I, I know where you're headed, and All I'm right. heading there with you. Water bet. Our first week 12 water bet already. Yeah. Listen, 25 carries for Todd Gurley. The recipe for this team is going to revolve a lot more around Todd Gurley and Jalen Ramsey and managing Goff's, you know, Woods, hopefully he's back. Probably not going to have Cooks. I, I don't know. It's been a little bit scary. I totally 18 get attempts. it. 18 attempts. I totally get it. 18 11 attempts. 11 completions. But Chicago's offense... Baltimore's was, defense is – what defense is playing better right now in the league? Baltimore. Okay, No, Baltimore's not at the top. There's several they're teams the, they're playing – They're near the top of There are of several recency, teams yeah. playing much better. The Chicago Bears are a pretty darn good defense. The reason that Goff had only threw the ball 18 times is because Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, they didn't the, – the Bears didn't score. The When when you were down by three points, it's like, well, the game's over because the, the Bears can't move the ball. Lamar Jackson's going to score. Jared Goff's going to have to throw the ball. And what I saw in this game that made me think, look, the future might be a little bit brighter, was that the offensive line that we expected to be even worse than the trash that he had was significantly better than the trash that they had. And this was against a really good Bears front. So uh, if they could protect Goff and Lamar Jackson could score, I think, I think that's... For what it's worth, and it's fantasy consistency, Baltimore's defense, fourth, fourth, second, and then the game against Houston where they, I believe they were – They have to be – Top five. Yes. So they, they're on a roll right now. We'll see what happens. It's nice to get an early bet in. And hopefully you have Robert Woods back. We don't know what the reason was, but, you know, last second missing a player who you practiced with was part of the game plan all week certainly didn't help golf this week. No question. Running back stank. Oh, Brian Hill, you burned. Oh, my You goodness. burned a lot of people. You tell me that Brian Hill's going to get 15 attempts. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, we're all right. Against Carolina. Yeah, Carolina's been giving up top five performances. Then you're going to have a good game. I mean, 60% it, of snaps, Jay. Yeah, it, everything that you wanted to happen, game script wise, the, the I mean, yeah, were they the winning? Falcons were, were they? up. The opportunity was there, the snap counts were there. You know, you, you talk about process versus results. The process was true here. The results were... 15 for 30. That's he two. scored a touchdown, got it called back. You talk about the listener league matchup. We're tied in. Brian Hill and Kyle Allen have a lot to do with that. And I appreciate you. So can you start Brian Hill against Tampa? Tampa's got a no, great running defense. No, I, I mean, the Tampa... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And then the week after is the New Orleans Saints. I feel like this is uh, Ty, Ty Johnson V2. It could be. You might be able to flex Brian Hill if you know he's going to get 60% of snaps. And what sucked is Quadri Olison was in on the play. So he scored a touchdown. Quadri Olison didn't, didn't do much. But he had a touchdown where the offensive line opened a hole so big that I could have, I could have hit that hole. And I'm not fast. But uh, Brian Hill just didn't have that single no opportunity. Juice. Yeah. Uh, Sonny Michelle, oh, man, ugly. James White, bad game. Fournette. This is Fournette's first stinker. Are you worried about it? Because it's his, you know, Nick Foles comes in. 
they get beat up. Now the game script didn't really not conducive for Fournette. Yeah, that's that's part of what it is. I mean, Leonard Fournette's a guy that is usually getting 20, 25 carries. He had eight eight carries, but that was because they were down the whole game. He did he still was involved in the passing game, seven targets. They just weren't able to run the ball. Uh, so I'm not too worried about Leonard Fournette going forward. Quite a few running backs struggled that we thought might have better weeks. Ronald Jones, Miles Sanders, Tevin Coleman, Raheem Mostert. Yeah, I would say that the 49er combo is the one that surprised me. Uh, I didn't think Ronald Jones or Miles Sanders were going to have a great game against New Orleans um, and New England, but the 49ers rushing game has been awesome. <clears throat> has been awesome. <laughs> what was that? That was me <laughs> needing to cough and pushing the cough button. Sorry, Jay. You scared before, Jay Grizz. Before I finished I've speaking. never heard a mid-sentence, uh, like a mid-word cough. Yeah, well, it's the newest, it's the newest thing oh, to do. Oh, yeah, you pushed the button again. Yeah, I did Could it again. Could you keep it down? Yeah, no, I'll just keep it down. You and Jay can do the rest <laughs> of this. But uh, Kyle Shanahan even came out and said it's the first time, to his knowledge, that he consciously abandoned the run said it just wasn't working. 12 for 14 was Tevin Coleman. They couldn't. Uh, 6 for 13 was Raheem Mostert. Yeah, a combined, what is that, a combined 27. You did it. I did it. A combined 27 yards against the Arizona Cardinals. On 18 carries. Defense. So, you know, you know and, and again, Shanahan willingly said after the half, they just stopped. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo was like, oh, this is really easy to throw on them. I was going to say, just that, do that. there's something to be said. You know, you can look at Arizona and say, okay, they're not a great running D, but you don't need to run against them. All you do is throw, and it all works out, yeah. especially to the tight end position or with any form of misdirection. They're an undisciplined defense. They, they fall for I, – I tweeted yesterday, here is the offensive game plan that I saw. Screen, 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 screen. Screen, Dwelly, screen, screen, screen. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Dwelly was a touchdown, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, the Dwelly's okay. always a touchdown. The Dwelly is a touchdown. It's peanut butter Dwelly time. Peanut butter Dwelly time. I knew you'd, peanut like, butter dwelly I knew you'd like that yeah. one. Uh, AP, 9 for 25. So that, To be honest, Geis didn't have a good game on the ground either, but he had a 45-yard reception at the end of that game for a touchdown. Going forward, it'll be difficult to know how it breaks down. Well, here's the thing. It, it, you don't want either. I mean, it sucks. Maybe that's You the... had nine carries for Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson is not the type of running back that's ever going to do anything with nine carries. That's true. You had seven carries for Darius Geis. I don't know that Darius Geis is going to be the – I mean, is there a back where seven carries is enough? If they're splitting these backs and they're not the pass-catching uh, guy – I mean, I know Geis did have the, the long reception, but that, that's not his specialty – then I don't think you want either of these on a on a bad team. All right. I mean, for this show, it feels like David Johnson was active. Mm. Zero touches. Did you see his tweet? Yes, I posted his tweet. Uh, this morning? Welp. That's his tweet. He Welp, dot, Welp dot dot dot. Yeah, uh, that, that could mean a couple different things. Um, it could mean... <laughs> Uh, whoops. It could mean sorry. It could mean... No, keep going. Keep uh, going. It could mean pissed off. There you go. There you go. Uh, I would imagine that he did not know that the game plan was, DJ, you are the backup, and we don't want you to touch the ball. He, I saw him run out on the field one time. He was out there a few but snaps. But Kenyon Drake is the guy right now. Yeah. Kenyon Drake is, is the Arizona Cardinals starting running back. What do you do with someone if they think they're healthy and you think they're not? Asking for David Johnson and Mitchell Trubisky. Well, if I'm the head coach, I play whoever is the better player. And there is no doubt right now that Kenyon Drake is the better player. We, as Arizona Cardinals fans, on the season have been lamenting from week one. Even when he was having good fantasy games in the passing game, he has not. We said Chase Edmonds early on was the better runner. If you're talking between the tackles, trying to get to the edge, much better than David Johnson, and Kenyon Drake is better than Chase Edmonds. It was so hard because David Johnson, in the first six weeks of the season, had five top 12 performances at the position, masking the inefficiency on the ground. But even last year, he couldn't, you know, this offensive line in Arizona, it was a 3.2 carry. You kind of just said, hey, he'll be involved in the passing game. Now he's involved in nothing. So, so it's just disappointing. I know he's got five good performances, but think about this. Weeks five, six, and seven, 
Chase Edmond was was the running back 13, 15, and the running back one. Then you have Drake, who's come on board and, you know, was the running back two against San Francisco two weeks ago, was in the 20s last week, had a, a pretty solid week this week. I think this system is... In a redraft league, do you drop David bon David Johnson because he's got a bye week? And then Rams, Pittsburgh. Yeah, you know... Do you I, drop him because you have to... Would you go drop him for a handcuff? You're the Dalvin Cook owner. Do you drop David Johnson for Madison for the stretch run with the bye week next week? Drake, Edmonds will be back. I mean, this is a big time question. It is you're a in a huge... keeper league, you're not doing something like that. But there was there was a roster I was helping. What do you do, Brooks? Yeah, I think you do it. You drop him? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because of the bye week. You wonder, okay, the bye week, the extra rest. Does that get him healthy and he's in front? But the reality is he's not share. going to go to the front. He's go If he comes back to playing relevance, not fantasy relevance, then he's in a timeshare. So as insane as it sounds, I think you can drop David Johnson. You don't you have, don't have to. to. Yeah. If David Johnson was out on waivers, I could promise you my league of record team, I'd pick him up for the shot. I picked up LaShawn McCoy last week for the shot that – Maybe, you know, it was a planned veteran rest. Well, yeah, Damian Williams with some rumored issues right now, too. Yeah, so, uh, you know, starting running backs aren't – well, who knows if he's a starting running back. Running backs aren't uh, must-drop assets, but you can if you rest need to move on. Rest of season on your team, what would you rather have, David Johnson or Ronald Jones? Ronald Jones. Yeah, me too. That – He's got to get healthy, and then we'll see what happens next year. I don't usually cry – on our episodes, but that one hurts. Yeah, that one hurts because Ronald Jones, not 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 your is not my favorite. Yeah, he's not been team. your fan. Um, and uh, David Johnson. Oh man, move uh, on, move. Ronald Jones. Uh, he he had four for thirteen. So uh, yeah, it wasn't infinitely more than David Johnson. Wasn't great. <laughs> All right, wide receivers. Whether you were named uh, Mari Cooper or Cooper Cup, the Coops didn't do much. Mari Cooper, three for thirty eight. On eight targets. What kind of snap count did he have? That's got to be concerning. Yeah. Uh, look, he's he's been dealing for the last, I don't know, month, if not the whole season, with nagging injuries. Playing 55% of snaps is a little bit concerning. Now, if, if you tell me he gets eight targets, I, I go, oh, I wish it was 10 or 12, but that should be enough for Amari Cooper to get the job done. He didn't. Now you've got New England, Buffalo, Chicago, the Rams, the next four weeks are yeah, – that's a tough stretch run for Cooper. But you you have to still start him, right? He's been too good to not start him. I don't know about this coming week on the road against New England. I think y you can look to pivot, but he's just a hard guy. He's, he's too uh, involved and too talented to easily put him on your bench. You remember when you coughed mid, mid word? You remember I your do. mid word cough? Our, our producer Al Borland said he thought we actually lost power. That's what he thought. Oh. He thought we lost power. To, he was worried over there. No, nope. got power. Just lost my mind. You downgrade Cooper Cup against Baltimore? Probably not. You're playing him. Yes, uh, based on my Jared Goff comments, I am playing. Him. Yeah, even even if I'm pessimistic on Goff, you don't bench his number one. And Cooper Cup was one centimeter from. Uh, a 50 plus yard touchdown it was ruled a touchdown on the field and then got called back to where it was just placed on the inch line all right not so smooth right here Kenny Galladay went on a holiday against Dallas one for 34 five targets but you don't do anything about it you have a risk with Driscoll you just have a risk -o. yeah it's not something you want I, th I think Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones the way that I look at it with Driscoll is that they're streaming options I lowered Kenny Galladay significantly in my rankings this week um, to be fair I did the same with Marvin Jones who ended up with two touchdowns on four receptions um, this coming week against Washington I'm all about that life yeah well, give me that th Kenny Galladay life I think you just have to move forward with him because you probably don't have a pivot option that gives you more upside than Galladay probably don't that's then, very similar is, to Coop, uh, to uh, Mari Cooper do we have to bury Allen Robinson Four for 15, six targets, quarterback problems. Maybe. Tell me who their quarterback is. If Chase Daniels out there, you're back on Robinson? Yes. I, I think he is better for Allen Robinson um, than Mitchell Trubisky. Emmanuel Sanders was just three for 33 if you tried to get him into your lineup. He only played on 46% of snaps. Every time he was tackled, if you watch this game, 
He got up pretty slowly. I would have been designing plays where he runs out of bounds at the end of the Yeah, they look, they benched him for I mean he just got he got hurt. Uh, benching him is the wrong terminology there, but he was on the sidelines with his helmet off for most of the end of that game this when they tolerance. needed him. Yeah. So this was the issue of saying maybe don't start a guy coming back off of injury week one. Yep, yep, yep. And then Mohamed Sanu, we talked about his snooze performance, two for four on four targets. That sucks. Tyler Boyd. I thought he was going to be very safe this week against Philadelphia. I, I really mean, did. Everything said the matchup, the what what we've seen from New England and Sanu, he was a smash play and was terrible. So he's a major bust. Tyler Boyd played 96.8% of snaps and got three targets against Oakland. How'd that work out for him? I it's it's weird, man. Finley is Finley is not, really not bad. Good, not Who good. would you rather have, Kyle Allen or Finley? It's definitely Kyle Allen. Oh yeah, yeah. it's not even close. Do you I mean, want what the do you guy mean? who threw four to, like if for my franchise? If oh, I had to, if Kyle I, Allen. Yes, Kyle Allen might be the future of that franchise. Yeah, I'm just saying he threw four interceptions and looked terrible. Yeah, and Finley. Kyle Allen's infinitely better than Ryan it, Finley. That's the point I'm oh, making. Yeah, I mean Ryan Finley is. He's called placeholder for first round pick. Yes, that's on his uh, football card. Yeah, he All hands right. out a business card like, and it just says, "I can get you the number one pick overall." That, oh, me. that's true though. All right, some tight ends will let you down. You got nothing out of these Colts tight ends. Ebron four for twenty seven. Jack Doyle was not targeted. That that's insane. Because not targeted. Jack Doyle had been on a run of having a couple good fantasy games and now you get your quarterback back and you're like oh you had a touchdown the two you know the each of the last two weeks and then he was nothing. bad bad yeah stinkers of the week presented by odor eaters odor eaters the best in foot odor defense why don't you thank our studio sponsor jason what did I we find what did we find on there pristine yesterday auction. pristine auction yesterday mark ingram signed baltimore ravens logo football 44 bucks oh that sounds on like a, a real steal that sounds like something i want to get and give as an incredible gift for your friends to family myself no but that, that'll that work too so like i love me today yeah pristine auction after you've cleaned your butt oh i haven't breaking news my omigo all right this is real speculative news had come out that basically rob gronkowski needs to let the patriots know by saturday november 30th if he's going to return to the team which could kind of use him based on they're not running the ball the way they did when he was blocking, and they're not uh, passing the ball they the way they did when he was available to Tom Brady. He did tweet out something about uh, you know a big announcement, but we think it's probably CBD related. Yeah, again. he's because he keeps doing back. that. I he's really playing up this like I might have something to say for his own financial gain. I was gonna say that's what he should be doing as he's doing all these business CBD. Uh, directional stuff. He needs to stay in the limelight. That's pretty smart. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, w but for fantasy, do you pick them up a, on a flyer? Do you? I go never and grab dropped them? them on. I never dropped them on my dynasty team. Sure. I just left them on that bench. When you've got a thirty-player roster, you you can afford to have Gronk on there. But I'm saying in a redraft league where you are living the tight end hell, and you you're don't. Like, okay, I just had OJ Howard goose me. <laughs> do you? <laughs> he goosed you, did he? <laughs> yeah i mean i i wouldn't i wouldn't if it were me i don't i don't think, i wouldn't either think about uh what has to happen i mean he's got to get back in december he's got to gain about 65 pounds of muscle it seems that way and then he's got to be involved to the degree of like you know having success for your team it's probably not worth the roster spot right now when you're fighting over handcuffs and you're fighting over flex plays by week still to come next you'd week. rather have abercrombie you talking about Hollister? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hollister coming back. I, I don't. I don't know. He, you, you can have him. You can have. I'll take Abercrombie. I know you will. All right, Jay Grizz <laughs> says it's time to go. Again, we thank Pristine Auction. Tomorrow we'll have a waiver show. We'll see if we get. Uh, the we'll see if we we'll get Mike back. back. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully he's feeling better today. Otherwise, enjoy the Monday Night Football game, Foot Clan. We will be back with you soon. Let's go, Philip Rivers. Do something. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.